Good afternoon, students. I hope you have completed your reading practice test. Now we are going to look at the answers with the explanations of the reading test from book 10, test A, general. First topic is smoke alarms in the home. I'm going to share my screen with you and explain the answers by showing you where the answers are located in the passages. I hope all of you can see my screen. As you know, the reading test in IELTS has three passages and they have 40 questions, which you have to complete within one hour. Now, this is the practice exercise test that you did, which is from book 10, Stage General. Now let's look at the first question. The first seven questions are the type of true, false, and not given. So here you're reading a sentence and you are checking out in the passage whether this statement is true, false, or not given. First question is, all new houses in Australia must have smoke alarms. Now, how do we determine whether this statement is true, false, or not given? You have to look at this um, indication on top. So, do the following statements agree with the information given in the text on page 104? It, the answer would be true if the statement agrees with the information. Whereas, it would be false if the statement contradicts the information. And if there is no information on this, or if there's only partial information, then the answer would be not given. And the question one says, all new houses in Australia must have smoke alarms. As you know, true, false, not given, there would be a lot of synonyms used. So there would be a word in the question statement. But there would be a different word, which means the same in the passage. Or they would paraphrase the statement. They would rephrase it. In the question, you may have subject, verb, object. But in the passage, it may be object, verb, subject. Now let's look at the passage. This statement is true. All new houses in Australia must have smoke, must have smoke alarms. So if you look at the first sentence here, it says smoke alarms are now a standard feature. That means in all Australian homes, it is a standard feature to have smoke alarms and are required by the National Building Code in any recently built properties, which means it is a standard, it is a rule that everyone should have smoke alarms. It's now a standard feature. This goes to prove and statement one is true. Yes, it is true that all new houses in Australia must have smoke alarms. New houses, it says new houses. And here the synonym for that is in any recently built properties. So you see there are keywords, but there are uh, synonyms used. It's not the same word. And they say there is in our standard feature. What is the standard feature? Having smoke alarms. And the question, what did they say? All houses must have. Must have means the standard feature, it means they must have. Let's look at the second statement. Photoelectric smoke alarms cost less than ionization smoke alarms. This statement is false because you see in the second paragraph, it says there are two principal types of smoke alarms. Ionization alarms, are the cheapest and most readily available smoke alarms. So if ionization alarms are the cheapest, that means they can be nothing cheaper than that, right? So they are saying ionization alarms are cheapest. And here it says photoelectric alarms, smoke alarms cost less than ionization. But they are already saying in the passage that ionization are the cheapest type of smoke alarms. So this statement is false. They cannot be anything cheaper than that. So photoelectric smoke alarms cost less means they are cheaper than ionization smoke alarms, which is a false statement. Third one says, it takes a short time to fit most smoke alarms. It does not talk, it's not given. It does not talk about the time taken to fix a smoke alarm. They're not talking about the time anywhere. So it is not given. Fourth statement is true. It says any hardwired smoke alarm 
must be fitted by a specialist technician. It is true. Because if you look at the statement, here, the next paragraph, it says, for the installation of hardwired smoke alarms powered from the mains electricity supply. However, you will need the services of a licensed professional. Licensed professional is another word for specialist technician. The specialist is required for fixing the hardwired smoke alarms. Fifth statement is false. It says you should get in touch with your local council before placing any ionization smoke alarms in household rubbish. The answer is false because it says here any ionized smoke alarms. To, uh, to, you should get in touch with the local council before placing any, any ionization smoke alarms in household rubbish. Whereas in the passage, what did they say about uh, contacting the council? It says if you have more than 10 to dispose of, you should contact your local council. That means there's a condition. It's a conditional clause. What is the condition? Only if you have more than 10 alarms to dispose, then you should contact the local council, not any. Whereas in the question they say, any. You should contact, get in touch with the, they say you can get in touch. In the passage they say you must contact. Who you have to contact? The local council. Before placing any ionization smoke alarms? No, it's only above 10. So it is false. Sixth, the sixth statement says smoke alarms give a warning sound to indicate that the battery power is low. It is true. It says here in the next paragraph, last paragraph, your battery powered smoke alarm will produce a short beep every 60 seconds to alert you when the battery is running out and needs replacing. So it is true that when the battery is running out, there will be an alarm. What is that? There will be a short beep. There will be a 60 second uh, alert, a beep sound alert. So it is true that it gives a warning sound. It says warning sound to indicate and here what they say is a warning sound, they say it produces a short beep every 60 seconds to, to alert, to alert and here in the question they say to indicate. So there are a lot of synonyms used. Seventh sentence is old smoke alarms need to be checked more than once a month. It's not given. It's not given about old smoke alarms. However, it's given about battery powered smoke alarms. They say that it, it means a battery powered smoke alarm because this paragraph talks about battery powered smoke alarms. They say it should be tested every month to ensure that the battery and the alarm sound are working. Know that the sensitivity in all alarms will reduce over time. So you know that it is not for the um, old smoke alarm, it is only for the battery powered smoke alarm. So I hope you've understood the answers from one to seven and how you go about choosing true, false, not given types of questions. Let's look at the second passage. The second article in section one is Sydney Opera House Tours. And the questions are listed here from number eight to 14. What is the prompt? What is the task you have to do? The text on page 106 has seven sections or seven paragraphs, A to G. Which section mentions the following? So you have to match these questions with the paragraphs, the sections from where they are extracted. So write the correct letter A to G in the boxes 8 to 14 on your answer sheet. So you have to answer all your answers only in the OMR answer sheet, not in the question booklet. And you have to write only the letter. You should not write any words here. So the eighth question says, discounts are available to younger visitors. The answer is in C paragraph. So let's look at C. They say discounts for younger concessions. Australian senior, seniors and pensioners, students and children of 16 and under, fees only $24.50. So children of 16 and under, it comes as younger visitors. So discounts are available. Otherwise, what is the full uh, fare, the full Fares, 35, $35 for adults and $29.75 for online applications. But for children under 16, it is 24. So there is a discount. Here they say concession and the question they say discount, which is a synonym. Here they say discount. Ninth answer is the need for suitable footwear. It's an E paragraph. If you look at E, you see, it says here, 
door includes up to 300 steps. Flat rubber sole shoes must be worn. So specific footwear. Flat rubber sole shoes must be worn. So that is in paragraph E. So you match it with the letter E, the need for suitable footwear. The tenth one says the opportunity to pretend you are taking part in a concert is in paragraph D. So let's look at the synonyms they use here. In paragraph D, they say the backstage tour gives you backstage access to the Sydney Opera House. It is a unique opportunity to experience the real life dramas behind the stage. So real life drama behind the stage. Behind the stage means they are pretending. And it gives an opportunity. It's written opportunity in the passage. And what is it given in the question? Let's look at the synonym here. It is the opportunity to pretend. To pretend you are taking part in a concert. The opportunity word is used, which is the same word. And they say to pretend. And here they say to experience the real life drama behind the stage. So behind the stage is not the real acting. They are just pretending that they are acting in a drama, in a concert. Eleven statement says a restriction on the number of participants. That is an E paragraph. Talking about the restriction. Let's look at E paragraph. They say to purchase, bookings are essential, limited to eight people per tour. So it is limited. That is a restriction. Restriction means limitation. So it's a synonym again being used, limited to, which means a restriction to how many? Only eight people per tour. So that comes in paragraph E over here. Let's go to the next question. The 12th question says a reduction that applies to purchase using the, the internet. That comes in the C paragraph. If you look at C paragraph, they talk about the prices of the ticket. Adults, $35. But if someone purchases the tickets online, it is 29.75. So there is a discount here. Online means purchasing through the internet. So that is why they talk about online. And here they say it is on the internet. So that is in C paragraph. Next, we come to the 13th question. The need to book your ticket in advance. It's an E paragraph. So let's look at how they present this. The need to book in advance is given in a different way. In e paragraph here, it says online sales expire at 4.30 p.m. two days prior. Two days prior, the sale, the online sales expire. So they have to book it before that. So they say two days prior is equal to here in the question they are saying book a ticket in advance. So two days prior to the concert starting, they have to buy the tickets in advance. 14 statement says the length of one of the tours is in G paragraph. If you look at G, they talk about duration, one and a half hours. 1.5 hours means one and a half hours. That is the duration. Duration in another way. You can call it the length, the length of one of the tours. Duration and length are synonyms. Uh, with this, we come to the end of the first section. Now we'll go to the second section, section two, using direct mails to sell your product. This is question numbers 15 to 27. But this passage, using direct mail to sell your product, is from questions 15 to 21. In 15, you see, they're all in the blanks. That means they say, Complete the sentences below. That is a task. You have to choose no more, than, no more than two words from the text for each answer. So the words are from the text only. Not You, you cannot use synonyms. And it should be no more than two words. Maximum uh, limit is two words. It can be two words or one word. Fifteenth one says, sales letters should be sent to the decision maker in a company. So where is decision maker? Sales should be sent. Sales letters should be sent to the decision maker. So if you look at this question, the answer comes right here in the first paragraph. Here it's almost in order. All the answers are in order in the paragraphs. If you're contacting a business, that means you're sending a letter, business letter, it is important to address the letter to the decision maker. So you're addressing it means you're sending it to the decision maker. So the answer comes here, decision maker. The 16th one is your letter should make as much impact as possible. Impact is the answer. And here they say as much as, as much as, and here they use the word maximum. 
if you see this sentence, why the desire, desirability and price of the product on offer will obviously influence sales. You, should, you also need to gain the maximum impact from your sales letter. So they're talking about the sales letter which you're sending and they're saying maximum impact. Maximum and uh, after that word maximum comes impact. So instead of maximum, here they're saying as much impact as possible, which means maximum impact as possible. 17th sentence says, the reader's attention needs to be caught by the opening of your letter. That word opening comes here in the next paragraph. If you fail, they will throw it away. The opening is crucial to attract their attention. Their attention. The crucial. Opening of the letter is crucial. And here, what do they say? The reader's attention needs to be caught. It, I mean, it is crucial. It needs to be caught. What? By the opening of your letter. 18 sentences, letters should be sent in a white envelope. Let's look at where the sentence white envelope comes. Here it comes. Try to send each mailing in a white envelope. Right? So you have to try to send the mail in a white envelope. They said the letters should be sent in a white envelope. The 19th question says, it is better to print the brochure in two or more colors. So the answer missing is brochure. How do you find that? It says it here. Include a brochure, depending on the volume and on whether you can afford the cost, try to use at least two color printing for this. So that word, this is a pronoun which refers to brochure. So what should be in two colors? It's a brochure. So you have to write the word brochure. You can't write this obviously because it's a pronoun. You've got to find what noun it refers to and write the noun in your blank, blank space. Let's look at the 20th question. Consider sending a dash as this is more effective than a picture. Consider sending a sample as this is more effective than a picture. So where are they talking about samples? It's here in the next sentence. If practical, it may be worth enclosing a free sample. This is a much greater incentive than photographs. So they're saying it's much more effective, right? So it's a greater incentive than photographs when you send a sample. So here it says, Consider sending a sample as it is more effective than a picture. And here, instead of picture, what are they saying? Instead of picture, they're using the word photograph. So it is a greater incentive than a photograph. Photograph is a synonym for picture. Let's look at the 21st question. You should calculate the response rate to your letter. Many uh, students write you should calculate the response, but you cannot calculate responses. Calculation comes for the rate, rate of response. You should calculate the response rate to your letter. Here it comes in the first line of the second last bullet point. When you receive your replies. So when you receive your replies means to your letter, response to your letter. So what should you see? What should you calculate? When you receive your replies, assess your response rate and monitor the sales. Assess is another word for Calculate. What are you calculating? What are you assessing? You should calculate, assess your response rate. So you should write these two words, response rate. You just can't write response. You can't write only rate, you have to write response rate because you're assessing the rate of the response. So we finished the one word, uh, two word answers here, completion of sentences. Now we'll move to the next article in section two, questions 22 to 27. Let's look at what the question prompt is. Here you have to complete the notes. Earlier you have to complete the sentences. Now we're looking at how you complete notes, on the same topic. The word limit is no more than two words. You have to choose no more than two words from the text for each answer. Write your answers in the boxes, 22 to 27, on your answer sheet. So you need to write your words. Uh, it's not letters here. You have to write the words in the OMR sheet. You can write two words or it can be one word. It cannot be three because you will exceed the word limit and it will be marked incorrect. Make sure you follow the restriction and description of not more than two words. First sentence here is in the summary. Summary of role. Improve IFCES's dash around the world. So it is profile or international profile. So if you look at that, it comes here, right? Yes. It's in the first paragraph. Job summary. Today's the international profile of IFCES. So this 
job summaries for what? To raise the international profile. You can write only profile, or if you want to write international, that's the adjective of the word profile, noun, describing what type of profile. So if you write only profile, it's also correct. If you write international profile, it's also fine. So international is, is not mandatory, it's optional. So that's where your answer comes. Job summary is for what? To raise the international profile of IFCS. Here they say, summary of role to improve what? To improve IFCS's dash around the world. Around the world is already given, so you can write profile. So international is not really required. 23rd statement says, writing for a number of dash produced for both IFCES and a wider readership. Number of publications. The answer comes here. Write an edit copy for publications intended for internal and external use, including chemical engineer monthly. Write an edit copy for publication in, intended for internal and external use. And here they say, write an, uh, here what do they say in the question? Making sure, uh, sorry, write for a number, write is to write the copy and edit for a number of publications produced for both IFCS and a wider readership. So IFCS is internal and wider readership is external. So see how they give it in different words, there's a lot of synonyms. You have to also infer the meaning. The 24th sentence says, making sure the website content contains like, on current information. Some people just write content, or some people just write website. You need both, making sure the website content contains correct information. So the answer comes here, ensure. Ensure is a synonym for making sure. Making sure and ensure mean same, right? So what are you making sure? You're making sure, ensuring the website content is up to date and consistent. You're making sure that the website content, not only the website, not only the content, the website content is up to date. Up to date is what? Synonym for up to date here. It's here, it should be. Consistent. Right. Let's look at the 25th question. Employee specification essential includes second next subheading high level skill in writing appro appropriately for the audience to read. For the audience to read, where does it come? Let's write in the next subdivision here. Employee specifications, the bullet point. Excellent copywriting skills with strong attention to detail, a keen sense of audience, and an ability to tailor writing to its particular purpose. So audience, a keen sense of audience. So the word audience has to come here. The audience to read. Achieve a specific dash, a specific purpose. So that comes right after audience. An ability to tailor writing to its particular response. Sorry, to its particular Purpose. So the word purpose is given here. That's written achieve a specific purpose. Instead of specific, here they are saying particular. Particular purpose. You see the synonyms again being used. Now let's look at the 27th question. It says relevant qualifications at the postgraduate level. So this is about employee specifications, desirable includes relevant qualification at the dash level at a relevant qualification at a postgraduate level. So here they're talking about this desirable, recognized postgraduate qualification in public relations, journalism, marketing, communications. Recognized what qualification in public relations? Recognized postgraduate qualification. So here it says relevant qualification for what level? Postgraduate level. I hope you've understood how to complete the summary and complete the notes here and complete sentences. Now let's look at the third section, the passage, which is on Corrigan. It's a piece of um, New, Zealand's, New Zealand's history. Let's go through these questions. 
from 28 to 33. This text has six sections, A to F. What is the task? Which section contains the following information? So you have to match the statement to the particular paragraph. And then write the correct letter A to F in the boxes 28 to 33 on your answer sheet. You may use any letter more than once because some piece of information may be in the same paragraph. So you can use any letter more than once. 28 statement says, an example of a domestic product made of high quality gum. It is in paragraph E. Here it comes. So it's talking about the product. Now what are they saying? An example of a domestic product made of high quality gum. It talks about the first major commercial use of cordy gum was the manufacture of high grade furniture varnish. So what is the product? Furniture varnish. High grade furniture varnish, they're manufacturing that using cordy gum. It's a kind of clear paint used to treat wood. The best and purest gum that was exported prior to 1910 was used in this way. Right? So it's talking about the domestic product which is used in clear, uh, clear paint. So the answer comes in the paragraph. Now let's look at the next question. The 29th question says, factors affecting gum quality. That is an A paragraph. What are the factors that affect the gum quality? Let's look at paragraph A. It says here, in the past, it was the tree's sap, the thick liquid which flows inside a tree, which when hardened, um, let's look at the question again. Factors affecting quality, the gum quality. Okay. That comes in paragraph A in the second paragraph. It comes here. The early European settlers in New Zealand collected and sold the gum. Gum fresh from the tree was soft and of low value, but most of the gum which was harvested had been buried for thousands of years. This gum came in a bewildering variety of colors, degree of transparency and hardness, depending on the length and location of burial as well as the health of the original tree and the area of the bleeding. Highest quality gum was hard and bright and was usually found at shallow depth of the hills. Lowest quality gum was soft, black and chalky and sugary and was usually found buried in swamps where it had been in contact with water for a long time. So this whole paragraph in A talks about what affects, affected the quality of gum. When is it high quality? When is it low quality? What are the, uh, the factors affecting this quality of the gum. All right, now let's look at the 30th question. The 30th question is how cordy gum is formed. That is also in paragraph A. So it says here you may use any letter more than once. So again, you have the answer A here. And it talks about how, how this cordy gum was formed. That comes in the first paragraph of A. How is the gum formed? It says here, whereas now it is the wood of the cordy, which is in an important natural resource. In the past, it was the tree sap, the tree sap, thick liquid which flows inside a tree, which when hardened into gum, played an important role in New Zealand's early history. So they talk about that sap hardening and that becoming the gum. So this is in paragraph A as to how cordy gum is formed. Let's look at the 31st question. How gum was gathered? That comes in paragraph B. If you look at paragraph B, it says here in the second line of paragraph B, in Maori and early European times, up until 1850, most gum collected was simply picked up from the ground. After that, the majority was recovered by digging. So how was it done? It was most of the gum was just picked up from the ground. The remaining majority of uh, was recovered by digging after that process, after picking up from the ground. So this is in B paragraph. The 32nd question asks us where this sentence is found. Main industrial uses of the gum. Again, it's in E. So you have E as 28th answer and also the 32nd answer. This statement is also in E. The statement is that the main industrial uses of the gum. So in E paragraph, they talk about the industrial uses of the gum. 
substantia cori gum was used in 70% of the oil varnishes being manufactured in England in the 1890s. It was favored ahead of the other gums because it was easier to process at lower temperatures. The cooler the process could be kept, the better, as it meant, a paler version could be produced. Now let's look at the next paragraph in E. About 1910, cordy gum was found to be very suitable, a very suitable ingredient in the production of some kinds of floor covering such as linoleum. In this way, a use was found for the vast quantities of poor quality and less pure gum that had up until then been discarded as waste. Cordy gum's importance in the manufacture of varnish and linoleum was displaced by synthetic alternatives in 1930. Here they're talking about the industrial uses uh, in the manufacture, manufacturing of some products of this gum, using this gum. So what were the main industrial uses? One is linoleum and the other one is varnish. Manufacture of varnish and linoleum was replaced by synthetic alternatives in 19. The third question says, recent uses of corrigum. That's in F paragraph. If you look at F paragraph, talking about the recent uses. How do you know it says recent uses? Here you see, it says over the years, corrigum has also been used in a number of minor products, such as an ingredient in marine glue and candles. In the last decade, it has had a very limited use in the Manufacture of extremely high grade varnish for violins, but the gum of the magnificent cori tree remains an important part of New Zealand's history. So, here it talks about the recent uses of cori gum. Yes, now they're also talking about here in this question. Yes, they're talking about over the years and they're talking about the recent times. Now let's look at the last few questions. So you have to look at the following events in the history of Corrigan in New Zealand and the list of time periods below. Match each event with the correct time period A to I. Write the correct letters A to I in boxes 34 to 39 on your answer sheet. So here you have to match the information with the list of time periods given in the box here. Write the correct letter A to I. Origam was first used in New Zealand is A, before the 1800s. So let's look at where this answer comes. 34. So talks here about the, uh, in, in the 34th answer, A, it talks about before the 1800s. Now, if you look here, it is beginning of the 19th century. The original inhabitants of New Zealand, the Maori had experience with Corrigan well before Europeans, arrived at the beginning of the 19th century. The beginning of the 19th century means what is given in the question here as before the 1800s. Second question is, the fifth question, the amount of corrigum sent overseas, eight. that is B. B is in 1900. In 1900, where does it come? It's here. Here. Last paragraph here. The increasing number of diggers resulted in rapid growth of the cori gum exports from 1,000 tons in 1860 to a maximum of over 1 lakh tons in 1900. So it is here. 
in uh, exports, 1,018.60 to a maximum of over 10,000 tons. 10,000 tons in 1,900. So here, the question was, the amount of corrigum was sent, it, it peaked. It peaked, so it peaked when? It peaked in 1900, it peaked, and here in different words they are saying, the peak, they said it, it increased to a maximum of over 10,000, so that's when it reached its peak. Now let's look at the 36th question. The 36th question is, the collection of supplemented farmers' incomes, that's D, between the late 1800s and supplemented farmers' income. So the farmers had another, uh, the farmers had other work and this was their supplementary work. So this comes over here. In, for 50 years from about 1870 to 1920, the corrigram industry was a major source of income for settlers in northern New Zealand. As these would-be would farmers struggled to break in the land, many turned gum, gum digging to earn enough money to support their families and pay for improvements to their farms until better times arrived. So when the farming didn't do well, they struggled to break in the land. So then they used uh, gum digging as an alternative, as a supplement to their income. So that was 1870 to 1920. And that helped them to pay their bills and pay for, uh, pay for their improvements to their farms do better in their farm. So that is 1870 to 1920. It's given here. And that goes here, 1870 to 1920. 1870 to 1970. That's between 1800s and the early 1900s. Now we have the last three questions. Origam was made into jewelry. That is E, between 1830s and 1900s. Origam was made into jewelry also. So that comes in this here. A paragraph in the time of Queen Victoria of England, 1837 to 1901, some pieces were made into fashionable amber beads that women wore around their neck. So that is jewelry, 1837 to 1901. So they're referring to how they used this for jewelry as well. So that answer is, uh, they say, 1837 to 1901, right? So that is E between 1830 and 1900. Here it comes. The original inhabitants of New Zealand, the Maori, Corrigan well before Europeans arrived in the That is I. Now we come to the 39th answer. Sorry. Let's look at the F paragraph. In the last decades, it has been a very limited use in the manufacture of extremely high-grade varnish for violins. Violins are string instruments, and says in the last decades. So that is recent times. So that is why I is the answer. And the 39th question says, most of the cori gum was found underground. That's G. It says after 1850. So after 1850, most of the cori gum was found underground. That comes here. Up until 1850, most gum collected was simply picked from the ground. So it's all underground. But that's up until 1850. 
And the last question says, in the answer sheet, what was most likely to reduce the quality of curry gum? B, exposure to water. Exposure to water comes here. Here. Lowest quality gum was soft, black or chalky and sugary and was usually found buried in swamps where it had been in contact with water for a long time. So it had reduced the quality because of the exposure of uh, it being exposed to water for a long time. So that is why the answer for this 40th question is the, the quality of gum reduced because of exposure to water. So with this, we finish one complete reading test. I hope you've understood how to go and look for synonyms, how to look for free phrasing of sentences, how to infer the meaning, how to comprehend the text, the passages, and extract your answers. So wish you all the best for your, uh, I'll, I'll just stop sharing my screen. I wish you all, all the best for your further practice tests for your reading. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much.